If you're a social media manager who's been doing everything right, you've been studying up on your craft, you've been taking on portfolio projects or smaller ticket clients, and you just can't seem to catch a break, you can't seem to get those high ticket clients that you know provide you with that income that you're really looking for, this is the video for you. Today I'm gonna be talking about the seven things, the seven shifts that you can make to hopefully attract more of those high ticket clients. And of course, for my non-social media managers out there, please keep watching. A lot of this will apply to freelancers of all disciplines. So the first thing that I'm gonna recommend is specializing. I truly believe that the future of social media is specialized. I think given the number of social platforms out there, given the number of features that exist within each social platform out there nowadays, it's really hard to be sort of a jack of all trades when it comes to social media management. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I think it is very rare. And I think a lot of clients have been burned by that. A lot of my clients have told me, yeah, my former agency or my former freelancer told me that they could help me with LinkedIn while they were helping me with TikTok and LinkedIn crashed and burned or vice versa. So I think it's very important that your specialty is clear. Higher ticket clients tend to be more willing to work with different contractors for different things. At least that's been my experience, meaning they might have a TikTok strategist, they might have a LinkedIn sales marketer, and they might have a LinkedIn organic marketer and a LinkedIn paid marketer. Like they might have different people in each of those seats or on their full-time in-house team. So it's important to just be honest about what your capabilities are. I would rather tell a client, no, I actually can't help you with Twitter because that's not really, you know, I don't really know much about Twitter than say that I could and then not be able to provide them results. Now, of course, if you are looking to start a full-fledged agency, meaning that you have different people on your team who specialize in those things, maybe you have a Pinterest marketer, a Twitter marketer, a TikTok marketer, then of course your agency can offer like full social media management and strategy. But if you're just one person, unless you live, breathe and eat all of the platforms, I would recommend starting with the one that you know you can knock it out of the park with. You can always expand, you know, you can always learn, take courses, build your area of expertise. And I do think it's important to be able to speak to all of them. Like while I might not be a pro at TikTok, I do know how to speak to it. If a client asks me a question, of course I can help them. I can give general strategy recommendations, but I might not be the best person to do, you know, full service TikTok management. Similarly, it's important to have a unique selling proposition. Now this does vary a little bit from specialty because USP should really kind of go to the heart of it. Why are you doing this? Why are you running this business? Who are you meant to help? What makes you different from the competition? It might be really niche or industry focused, meaning you know you want to help nonprofit organizations serve more people in need, or you are passionate about helping female business owners tell their stories online. Like there are a lot of different directions that you can take it, but I do think it's important to have some heart to your business and not just say you're a social media manager who helps you get seen online. Like we all do that, you know, like that's just kind of a given. That's what a social media manager does, but it's important to be able to break through that a little bit and deliver something that's unique. If it's not industry or niche specific, it could also just be something about you. You know, maybe your unique selling proposition is that you are a creator at heart and that's what you're passionate about. So unlike a lot of agencies that will give you a lot of nice strategy documents and move along, you're actually happy to get in the weeds with your clients and shoot content for them, create alongside them and really turn them into influencers in their own right. Like. Think about what makes you different. Take a look at all of your competitors. Take a look at other people in your industry and figure out like, what do I have that that person doesn't? This doesn't mean you're better or worse, of course, but you're gonna just speak to a particular segment of the market. You're gonna speak to a particular type of person who really needs what you have. Tip number three is to go where high ticket clients are not just where your peers are or where you feel like you need to be. To keep it simple, I think that LinkedIn is super slept on in the world of freelance social media management. I think that Twitter is super slept on in the area of freelance social media management. I know that there are people on them, don't get me wrong, but yeah, you know, Instagram and TikTok are 
super populated with social media managers. And what I see is a lot of them are talking to each other. And that's fine if you're offering courses or, you know, something to other social media managers. But most of us get on those platforms looking for clients. And most of our clients, or at least most of the high ticket clients, don't tend to be hanging out there. I don't know any corporate clients who scroll TikTok to try to find a social media manager. I'm not saying that that's never happened, of course. And I think as platforms like that start to become more important, absolutely, it can happen. But go where they are as well, you know, create content wherever you wanna create content, but also go where they are. So that can mean social platforms, but also I noticed that we tend to get really stuck in social, you know, on the internet. And the fact is, if you're looking for corporate clients or, you know, higher ticket clients, they're also existing offline. So go to conferences, immerse yourself in their world. Dentistry, for example, is a super lucrative industry. So go to dentist conferences, rent a booth at a dentist conference or a table at a dentist conference and so on. Yeah, it might sound super dull. No, it doesn't make for the flashiest, coolest TikTok, but you'll be talking to people who can actually hire you versus just talking to your peers. You can also do things like browse top workplaces lists or fortune lists, ink lists, all of those things that kind of talk about the fastest growing businesses in particular industries or the best businesses to work for, things like that. Those tend to be companies that have some money. And from there, you can then reach out to them via email, via LinkedIn, maybe find out if they're going to any conferences or events that you want to attend and start to make connections that way. This one might sound a little superficial, but hear me out. I think you need to dress the part. And I'm not just talking about clothing. I mean, sure, if you go to a conference, like, you know, dress business casual, if the conference is business casual, of course, but I'm more talking about your marketing. Yes, you should have a website. I get this question all the time. I'm a social media manager. Do I need a website? You don't need one. You can do whatever you want. But if you're trying to attract a high ticket client, I cannot tell you one client that has paid me multiple thousands of dollars who hired contractors that didn't have a website. Even in your messaging, you want to kind of play it cool. You don't want to come across as pushy and salesy and use those kind of typical like Instagram marketing coach sales tactics by like DMing people and trying to get them to sign a contract on the discovery call and things of that nature. You want to play it cool and have that high ticket mentality if you're going after high ticket clients, which brings me to my next point, which is give freely. A high ticket mentality is an abundance mindset, right? It is not scarcity mindset. It is not, oh my gosh, please talk to me. It is not freezing up when you get in the room with the high powered CEO. It is knowing you have something that they need and being confident in that. And with that, if you find yourself in a room with somebody who might be able to hire you, it's giving them real advice. It's talking to them. It's helping them before asking. And yeah, of course, there's a possibility that they won't hire you and you will have given your work away for free. But most of the time, you'll find that is just a way to build trust. And that is a way to sort of prove that you have the ability to do what you say you're gonna do. Think about any other high ticket purchase you make in your life. Why do dealerships? for brand new vehicles offer free test drives? Why do appliance companies come in and install your $3,000 refrigerator for free? It's because they wanna make sure that you're gonna be happy with end result, and they also wanna earn your trust and give you that kind of concierge experience after dropping, you know, three to 30, so $60,000 on something. Tip number six is to make friends. If I've learned anything in my freelancing journey, it's that other freelancers are not my competition. They are my support system. They are my referral network. They are my shoulder to cry on. I think it is so important to have people in your corner who know what you're all about, who can vouch for you, who you can help in return and so on. Referrals have been responsible for a lot of my higher ticket clients because you know, my friends or people who I network with in the industry, they know my pricing, they know their client's budget. And so they're going to make recommendations based on a true fit. They're not going to recommend somebody who wants to pay $100 a month come to be because they already kind of know that I'm out of their budget or that we wouldn't be a great match. I also find that these referral clients tend to do a lot less of that nickel and diming, like, hey, can I get 
reference checks or lower this project by $500 or whatever the case may be, because they trust you. You're kind of coming with that built-in trust based off of your friend or the person who actually referred you. Again, abundance mindset, right? You can go into scarcity mindset and think, like, I'm just gonna do this on my own. I don't need anybody. And no, you don't need anybody, but like it definitely helps. So just be open to it. And my last tip is to believe in yourself. I know that's real cheesy, but like, let's just keep it real. If you want high ticket clients, you have to believe that your service is a high ticket, a high value service. But hold on, this is not just mindset talk. Of course, like I'm sure there's tons of confidence exercises that you can do and things like that. Sure, that's important, but you actually have to deliver on what you say you can deliver. And if you can't, if you don't have a proof of concept yet, you need to get one, whether that's your own portfolio project, whether that's working for a friend or a family member for a little bit of time to prove that you can help them see results, whether it's taking a course, investing in yourself in some way, it is important to actually have the skills to do the job. And I'm sure that anybody watching this is absolutely capable of it, but you do need to be good. It's not just about mindset. I think it's also important though, to not go too far on the preparation route, if you will, because we can sometimes like psych ourselves out. We can sometimes be like, well, I just need to learn one more thing and one more thing and one more thing and help one more person. So you wanna do it strategically where you're not burning yourself out on free or low cost work. But a good rule of thumb is to have, you know, one or two really solid portfolio projects under your belt where you know that you can knock it out of the park. And again, this goes back to point one about specialization. Don't offer LinkedIn advertising if you're not comfortable with it or you've never done it. Don't offer TikTok strategy if you don't even have a TikTok account. Offer things that you know you can knock out of the park, that you know you're gonna be good at, and that you're super confident about. And that is how you cultivate a high ticket mindset. So if you are somebody who is currently working on building up your social media management portfolio or you're interested in doing so, I invite you to my free class. It's happening this Friday. I will leave a link for you to register down below. We're gonna be talking about social media strategy and how you can build one for any clients, including yourself, that is really going to show results and that's not going to completely overwhelm you because let's be honest, it's kind of an overwhelming social media world out there nowadays. So I'm gonna break it down in simple human terms for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. Do you have any other tips for attracting high ticket clients? Let me know and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye-bye.